I think that a lot of people have the idea that the social base of the extreme right and the fascist movement uh, is the so-called uh, white working class. And, and that's a lot of baloney. There's a lot of baloney. The source of this right-wing danger uh, is the big bourgeoisie, and in particular, its financial sectors, you know. I mean, there are others in the military, industrial, in the big oil, and so on and so forth. I'm Joe Sims, and I'm the chair, co-chair of the party, along with Rosanna Cameron. Democracy is on the ballot because there's a slow-moving coup taking place across the country where the uh, Republican establishment, the MAGA forces, are in state legislatures all across the country trying to pass laws that would either suppress the vote or put uh, secretaries of state in positions uh, where they can disregard the uh, will of the electorate. And that is extremely dangerous. We got a long-term problem. I mean, the right-wing fascist danger has been incubating for decades. You know, it's well-funded, um, and it has deep roots in, in uh, this country, going all the way back to the days of slavery. There's been important shifts in the thinking of the uh, broad U.S. public, particularly in the broad working-class public. Uh, around questions of race and uh, gender and sexual orientation, which are really important. Um, also on issues of war and peace and, and the role of the United States in, in the global economy. All of those are, are very important. But it's also had the impact of scaring the hell out of the conservative reactionary sections of the uh, country, which uh, still have a vested interest in promoting uh, uh, what they perceive to be uh, the good old days when America was great. Big business is interested in maximizing profit. Um, I mean, that's the name of the game. And it's not something that they do because they're necessarily mean people, but the meanness is inbred into the system, you know? It's dog or eat dog. And, uh, and therefore, you, you saw when uh, Trump was elected a much more fierce implementation of neoliberalism uh, than what obtained under the Obama administration, though both were neoliberal. There was massive deregulation. Uh, there was a massive attack on the trade union movement. Uh, there was uh, a massive loosening of rules related to the environment and environmental regulation, and so on and so forth. And big business liked it. The main thing has to uh, uh, be to defeat the extreme right um, because, again, uh, we're trying to, and the country, when I say we, I mean the country is trying to overcome the effects of what happened on January 6th and everything that uh, led up to it. And a really important part of doing that is to strengthen the hand of labor, to strengthen the hand of the organized section of the working class. And in order to do that, you got to have uh, better, uh, more pro-trade union labor law. And the main thing in that regard is to pass the PRO Act, which will give unions a greater ability to uh, organize. Um, and unless you have uh, the force of the state and government behind you to implement it, to make it happen, it's just going to continue to uh, get worse. But the problem is not just electing these people. That's only the first step. The problem is building a mass uh, working class led uh, uh, social movement to make it happen. Because if you don't have that kind of pressure, it's going to be business as usual. It's going to be business as usual. So our goal is uh, to build a movement uh, and to support 
candidates, not because of necessarily their party affiliation, but because of the issues that they stand for and our ability to influence them. What we do know is that some of the uh, biggest corporations uh, that uh, were financing uh, both the GOP and the Democrats have uh, decided after saying that they wouldn't that they wouldn't support the uh, particularly the hundred and I don't know 37 40 members of the house who voted to uh, deny that uh, Mr. Biden had won the election that they're continuing to do so you know uh, we're talking about Home Depot. We're talking about Coke Industries, no big surprise there. Uh, we're talking about uh, Chase Manhattan Bank. We're talking about UPS and so on and so forth. You know, these are household uh, names. Um, and they're contributing big money uh, to these characters. Um, I saw that the uh, wholesale beer manufacturers uh, were one of the biggest contributors. I imagine that Coors, the Coors beer and those guys have a lot to do with that. Um, watery beer and bad politics, you know, horrible politics. Um, and so I think that the, the focus on corporate funding of the coup uh, is important both from an educational standpoint to get folks to understand uh, where the source of the problem is. <clears throat> and I also think it's important uh, politically to cut off that funding and to call upon the uh, broader forces in the country to demand that that happen. We raised at the National Committee meeting uh, last uh, January the, the idea of having a campaign with other organizations and movements focusing on the role of big business in supporting uh, the, those who supported the coup, the uh, uh, subversive caucus, it's called, fascist caucus. Um, that could include many different aspects and dimensions. One idea was to set up picket lines at, uh, you know, in front of the offices of corporations that are engaged in these activities, you know, uh, and um, do it with other groups if they're on board, talk to them, try to form a little coalition and make it happen. Um, call the press and uh, and I think that that would be a newsworthy kind of uh, uh, issue, but it's just one idea. There may be others that uh, you know people think of. The important thing I think is to bring attention to the issue in whatever shape that that might take. It's really important for us to understand that um, elections are about power. They're about relations of power. They're about um, uh, our people's, our class's ability to concretely implement uh, uh, platforms and programs uh, and make things happen. They, they, they uh, d d determine who gets what and how decisions are made. And I understand the reason. People don't think that it's effective. People don't think that, that, that their individual vote counts. People don't, but we have to understand that, that, that voting is part and parcel of, of collective action, of a class. Um, and, uh, and we can't think about it in terms of whether or not um, my individual voice is heard. It's about whether or not our collective voices are heard. I think, I think that that's the important um, uh, point to get across. Um, and, and if we can do that, 
And if we can convince uh, folks on that level, I think that we'll have made an important step forward. Uh, so I would encourage people uh, not to give up on it, um, not to give in to, you know, pessimism about it, um, but also not to have illusions about, you know, whether or not, because you got to do vo vote, but you got to do more than that. And that's what the party is about. It's about um, involving all of us and utilizing all of these collective tools. Big business don't understand nothing but power, relationships of power. They don't, you know, what did Frederick Douglass say? Power concedes nothing without demand, you know? Uh, but you gotta go further than just demanding it. It has to be organized, you know? Um, it has to be forced, you know? And, and the only way that you can force it is by striking you know, by occupying, by voting, by constantly keeping the pressure on.